Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I really, it's, it's an honor and I'm very thankful to be invited to the conference to have this opportunity to talk about uh, mathematical manier contributions. Also because it gave me the opportunity to go deeper on what manier have done, which is pretty amazing, as we will see. But as everybody knows, and also it's, it's a pleasure to be back. It was 14 years. <laughs> I never been here before. And actually, my first international conference, the first international conference that I attend, it was in '95, and it was after Manier died in in this in that year. And I think that it was one of those conferences that it was just a student at Imba. It was a conference that in certain way marked whatever I decided to work with. Okay, so let's go to the, the main topic. So I never met Manier, so I'll actually I met once in a, in a cough pool in, in the Sindicato de Shop in Copacabana. And he was talking about movies and we were discussing about movies, so really I cannot say anything about him personally, so I would like to really focus on, uh, on what he has done. And there is a little glimpse about uh, how Manier arrived to Impa. And what I heard, and many people have confirmed this, that back in time in 1971 was a moment that dynamical system started to explode, and especially in this. Uh, at least on this area of the world, related to the work of Smail. And Chacot Palis was one of the students of Smail when Smail is starting to make the most important new role in the dynamical system. He went back to Brazil. And Manier, who took his first step in dynamic with Jorge Lewowitz, he sent a letter to, to Palis back in 71. He was already back in Brazil. Um, this letter is lost. So we only know a little bit of an, an anecdote related to this letter. And apparently he proposed many uh, problems that he wanted to work with, and he was already working on what was the stability conjecture. We will talk later about deeply what is the stability conjecture. Um, so I, we just recorded a small video, short video, by Jacob Palis. Let me find it. Okay, so this is the letter. Eu recebo uma carta de um jovem que eu nunca ouvi falar, nunca havia ouvido falar antes, mas eu gostei do estilão dele. Nem era claro que ele tinha os resultados que ele disse que, que, que tinha, ou estava muito próximo de ter ah, essa famosa carta Ela, eu volto a falar nela daqui a pouco. Mas me impressionou bastante. Ele era muito jovem e muita ousadia. Está na cara que eu gosto disso. Eu gostei da, 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 da proposta dele. E convenci ao, ao Elor e Maurício que deveríamos convidá-lo. Só por oferecer ousadia nas propostas, eu julgo uma coisa positiva. A proposta dele já tinha algo concreto. Isso eu tenho certeza, na minha lembrança. Era um bom resultado, mas nada espetacular. O espetacular veio as propostas, foram propostas dele. Três meses depois do simpósio e tal, ele aparece. Ele não escreve dizendo, eu tô, vou aí, já aceito, eu queria trabalhar com você. Ele já, <risos> ele já chegou no Rio de Janeiro e foi nos visitar. <risos> Essa história do Ricardo. E foi, uh, foi empolgante, né? Um cara muito, muito uh, forte muito inteligente. 
Okay, so when the, when Pali said, I go into talk about this later because the video actually is 55 minutes. We asked him to give like a testimony of three, four minutes and he spoke for 55 minutes and he gave a lot of context of what's really going on. So anyhow, so this is the, the, the story about the letter. Um, and apparently the problem that he was discussing was the stability conjecture. And 16 years later, he came up with the proof of the stability conjecture. So this is one of his famous articles. I will explain what is the stability conjecture. And there is a video that you can find on, on the web. It's in, it's in the City University of New York. And there are many videos on mathematics. One is about Manier, one is by Manier, and where he explained the proof of the stability conjecture. I was talking to Martin that maybe it would have been better just to show the video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because really it's very interesting he explained how he got the stability conjecture. And again, so we are into video, let me show another short video, short part of this. Talking about this problem. A lot of people working on this problem. I don't want to say that. <laughs> Actually, it was the first problem that I thought about. <laughs> well, you got it. <laughs> Also, <laughs> 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 okay, suppose I thought everybody was going to laugh, nobody did. <laughs> 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 but whatever, I like it. <laughs> but anyhow, so it's a kind of confirmation that he was like working on this for a while. No? Okay. So this is the, so let's go to the, what is the stability conjecture, no? And here is the theorem. And the stability conjecture asserts that any structure of stable diffeomorphisms is act on a closed manifold is going to satisfy this condition, which is action A. So well, let's explain it and let's show some context of this. So this go back to the work of Andronon on triagrin that basically he, they were studying vector fields on surface, actually in, in an open disk. And so the question was, if you have vector field, you have the trajectories, and then you perturb in certain way this vector field, you have the trajectories of the nearby system. And the question is that they look the same. In certain way, they look the same. And so they were trying to find out which are the conditions that is having this property, that the phase portrait of the two dynamical systems are in certain way equivalent. And they build this concept of Grossier, RAF, which is basically just a concept for vector filling an open set in two dimensional, in the two dimensional space. The notion of structural stability was coined by Lefchet. He translated this work into English, and it was in French, and they translated into English, and he gave the name of RAF Grossier to structural stability. This is the reason why we know this notion nowadays. And it was Poisciotto who provided, and he was working with Lefchert, the definition of which is a structural stability in the case of surface. Later became the definition in any situation, which is this. So you say that the diffeomorphisms on a closed manifold is a structure stable, is it's going to be, the, the dynamics are going to be conjugate to any one nearby. Also, you have an open neighborhood of F such that for any G in this open neighborhood, you can find an homeomorphism such that have this property. So people say that this means that after a C0 change of coordinate, F and G are the same. So you are sending trajectory of F into trajectory of G. You have a periodic point here, you are going to have a periodic point there. And in certain ways, like the, under this C0 change of coordinate dynamic is similar. So this was a notion that started before this notion of action aim that was part of the conjecture. And to try to see what is an action aim, we have to go back to the work of Birkhoff. And basically, so Birkhoff, 
following Poincaré, he was analyzing which is, how, which is the type of dynamic that you, can, you could get when you have recurrent points. And based on this work of Birkhoff, it's male, uh, built uh, or produced a geometrical construction nowadays known as the horseshoe, which is this picture. And it's nothing else that you have this square, you're going to contract and stretch it and fold it back in a way that looks like a horseshoe. And this was a good example that showing that the, the, it's, it's coming, it became in the theory of dynamical system as a prototype model of very complex dynamics. So you are going to have chaotic phenomena, but they, they coexist with, with a lot of uh, periodic points. And he was saying, well, okay, if you change your dynamics, this means you change a little bit your rectangle and you change the image, it's going to look more or less the same. Just the drawing is a little bit the same. But this kind of macroscopic similarity is going to reproduce that is going to be on the deep macroscopic level is exactly the same and you have the both dynamic being conjugate. At the same time, an OSOP, uh, the Russian school working on flow related to geodesic flow of negative uh, curvature, he introduced the notion of hyperbolicity which is nothing else that if you look to the derivative, to the tangent bundle, the tangent bundle of R2, in this case R2, can be decomposed in two directions, which are invariant, one is, cont is contract and the other is stretch. In the picture, the contracting one is the horizontal, the stretch one is, no sorry, the contracted one are the vertical and the stretch one are the horizontals. So, and what's the stability conjecture? So first, Smale proposed the notion of action A. And action A was kind of trying to unify many of those examples that it was present at back in time. And an action A is nothing else than to say that the no wandering set, and you will say, what well, is the no wandering set? Well, the no wandering set is basically the only part of the, of the dynamic that you really care. It's hyperbolic, where you see the recurrency, where you have the periodic point. Hyperbolic means, means that the recurrent set have some property of contracting and stretching, and the periodic points are dense on this non-wandering set. Periodic points are part of the non-wandering set. It could be much larger. And with Pallis, after the work that Pallis did on Morse smell dynamic and smell about also understanding action aim, they proposed the following conjecture. And the conjecture is basically to unify the notion of stability and the notion of hyperbolicity. So these are two subjects that in certain ways they develop independently, well, not really independently. But the conjecture says that the structure of stability is equivalent to this property, action A and strong traversality. So what is the meaning of this is the following. So look like what is this? Uh, well, hyperbolicity is contracting and stretching, contracting and stretching. So you have a region that this looks like a, this horseshoe that we were saying before, contract and you stretch. This is related, for instance, if you are in, uh, and here you have a bunch of periodic points. Well, but this is a periodic point, it's a point that is coming back to itself. So you have a periodic point. Let's make it easy, if P equal P. Now for a periodic point, okay, you can take the derivative. And the derivative is a linear map, it's a matrix. And in the matrix you have eigenvalues. Well, basically hyperbolicity means that the sun eigenvalues are larger than one and sun eigenvalues are smaller than one in modulus. And that's it, this is hyperbolicity. So locally, if you have a small rectangle, it's going to be stretched and contract. Anyhow, here is the wrong direction. Anyhow. And so here you have these places where you contract, contract and expand. Here, where contract and expand. I put this different sub-index because in dimension larger than two, you could have point that the number of contracted eigenvalue could be different. For instance, in dimension th the three, you can have two contracted eigenvalues, only one contracted eigenvalues, and they are separated. 
And so they are independent pieces. And all those deaths are related to what they call the stable and unstable manifold. What is this stable and unstable? If you have this rectangle that was contracted and stretched, this means that the point which are in the horizontal are getting closer and closer, and on the vertical it became farther and farther away. So the stable set are the set of points that they are getting closer when you iterate, and the unstable set is the set that they are becoming farther away when you iterate. So the black one are the unstable, so this means that two points that are here, when you iterate, they start to move away, far away. And here, one two point here, when you iterate, they're becoming closer. And those set, they intersect transversally, and this is a transversality condition. And the main property of the ac this axiom name is that if you, this is kind of the cartoon of your dynamic. So, okay, so I he I here, the recurrent set is here, and here, and here, and they relate. So someone goes there, and then they go coming here. If you perturb, you will have another recurrent set, but it's going to be nearby of the other one. And this transversality, they are just a smooth uh, manifold. And if the initial one was intersecting transversally, the perturb one, they keep this transversality. Well, maybe it's like a, for 90% of the audience, they know this, but whatever. And, but if you don't like this picture, because it looks like a complicated, maybe we can make this picture. And this, if you don't like it, do the following. You take the circle, and you consider the follow, following dynamic. You take a point, this is the angle, and you double the angle. Well, what is the main property here? If you take a point, you take the derivative, the derivative, which is in this case is two, is larger than one. So if you get so confused with this, just think about hyperbol hyperbolicity in something that is one dimensional, it's only one direction, and the property is a derivative larger than one, that's it. And you say, well, what is the action name? Well, the derivative is larger than one, and periodic points are dense here. And so how do you prove it? You take a small interval, you iterate, this interval starts to stretch, and eventually you cover the whole circle. And so you have a, a small interval that is covered by the image, then you have to have a periodic point. So this is the, the sketch that means the whole Whatever, it's some sketch that will be relevant for us to consider as hyperbolic. It's an exercise. Try to prove that those guys are structurally stable. Try to prove it. And we will see later, we probably will get one slide that is one approach that Magné did in, in another context that shows an easy way to prove that those models are structurally stable. Anyhow, so first, Robin and Robinson, Robin in the C2 topology, Robinson in C1, they proved that action and transversality implies stability. So they proved one side of the conjecture. The convert was untackled and it was very extremely difficult and nobody have any idea on how to try to deal with this situation. And this is when Manier entered into the picture and he entered with, into the picture with a letter and actually with some idea that were written in the letter. And two years after this letter, he finished his thesis with Palis. The title is Persistent Invariant Manifold are Normally Hyperbolic. And if you look to the whole construction that he has done on the problem of the stability conjecture, you will see that he started to establish the first bricks. And he really was looked like, a, well, this is how, uh, what I'm going to say is like a, how you look to the story after the end of the movie. And you assume that at this moment he was already building the more important tools to go in the direction of stability conjecture. 
In this paper, he introduced so many notions. Some ones, they look like naive, and some ones, they look like uh, you don't know where it's going. But they are going to be so key on the proof of the stability conjecture. In fact, he introduced the notion of dominated splitting. This is the definition. It gets it's difficult to read. But dominated splitting, has, if for one matrix, so it's something about matrices. You have a matrix, dimension two. Remember that was hyperbolicity. Means that there are two eigenvalues in dimension two. One larger than one, and one smaller than one in modulus. Three and one quarter. He said, well, if you have these two uh, different eigenvalues, you have two different invariance directions. Well, here is the horizontal and the vertical, no? This is the eigenspaces. He said, okay, if you know, it's, this is pretty obvious, you have a matrix that you perturb, the eigenvalues are going to be nearby, so the uh, nearby matrix will have two eigenvalues, one larger than one and one smaller than one, and therefore you are going to have eigenspaces that are close to the initial eigenspaces of the initial system. But he said, okay, but this is not the, it's not that one eigenvalues are larger than one and smaller than one, that is going to produce this kind of robustness of eigenspaces. Which is essential, is that if you have two eigenvalues, A and B, what you want is that the relation between them is smaller than one. You have two different eigenvalues, you have two, di the two different eigenspaces, but they are far for the identity or for an omotet, uh, amotetia. If you perturb, how do you say omot omotesi? <laughs> uh, omoteti, okay. And you perturb it, you still have two eigenvalues, and this, they still they are different, and therefore they are going to have two eigenspaces close. This is the notion of dominated splitting. In a certain way, you can rephrase saying the hyperbolicity is something, if, if you think about <coughs> matrices, is the notion of robustness of eigenvalues. I mean, if you have one, uh, two types, the one that they are larger than one and the other smaller than one, this is going to be robust, the perturbation. And the other dominated split about the robustness of some sub bundles. Okay? Of course, uh, this is for one matrix. When you have a product that has so many matrices, uh, A1, AN, being dominated means infinitely many, that you can put all together in groups. So let's throw the first K, the second K, another K. When you do the multiplication, after, under some chains of coordinates, they are going to look like this. Places that maybe you contract, so you, you here you are contracting, here you contract more, if you expand, you expand more. Basically like this. There are many ways to define that. Anyhow. So it was a kind of naive concept, but it's going to be so fundamental in the proof of the stability conjecture. And hyperbolic split and R1 of type of dominated split. So this was the first thing. So then you have another paper, which sometimes look like a trivial remark. This is the funny thing. There are many of the stuff that he built, he made an observation that you look, well, yeah, and, what, and so what? No, so what, you look, you have it, powerful tool over there. And this is what is very interesting sometimes to look to the, his contribution. Sometimes he's coming up with definitions that look like naive, but those definitions are extremely powerful in how he start to use it, how he connect with different concepts. So he observed the following. If your system is stable, then you don't have bifurcation of periodic points. So, okay, why? Well, you have a fixed point. So this is, a, let's put a diagonal. This is a diagonal, no? Y equals S, one dimension. Have a fixed point. One fixed point, isolated. So there are no other, no other fixed point in this neighborhood. If you perturb your dynamic, and you say that it's stable, because you have this conjugacy, periodic points have to go to periodic points. Fixed points have to go to fixed points. 
And if you have for your initial system one fixed point, for the nearby system you only have one fixed point. You cannot have zero fixed point because you fix how to fix. Or you cannot have two because there, there is an excess. But this implies that the derivative <coughs> cannot be exactly on the fixed point, have to be different than one. Well, let's put like this. Let me kiss. Because if it work was one, you say, why not to bifurcate this periodic point, and then you create three. So stability implies that your periodic points have to be hyperbolic. So the eigenvalues of the derivative in the period all have to be different than one in modulus. So this means that, okay, so you have stability implied hyperbolicity on periodic points. Very naive, but powerful as we see. And he introduced this notion that is extremely interesting in itself. Forget about the stability. I will care on the dynamics that have the property of all periodic points are hyperbolic, but if you perturb, the periodic point remains hyperbolic. No? So, FRM is a system that all, the, all periodic points are hyperbolic. When you perturb, points still remain hyperbolic. And what he proved in this, co in this actually, after many lemmas, it's a conjecture. Well, first he showed that the stability conjecture can be repla replaced to this, showing that those guys, if somebody is here, this means that the, the periodic point are hyperbolic and the nearby also hyperbolic, then the non-wandering set is a hyperbolic set. But it makes sense because you say, well, okay, if you want to prove action A, uh, the hypothesis of action A that the periodic points are dense. And so you're assuming this kind of global hyperbolicity, the splitting hyperbolic have to coincide with the hyperbolic splitting on periodic points. <laughs> but why not to work on the other way? If I know that the on periodic points, the periodic points are all hyperbolics, maybe the hyperbolic splitting on periodic point can be extended to the closure. He's already aiming in this direction. So also he observed that for, in this paper, second scene, that for periodic point it's not only that the derivative have to be uh, larger than one or different than one. Oh, again, we say that they have to be different than one. But assume that now this is a periodic point of period k. You have to have something more. You have to have a good expansion and contraction of the period. So here this one dimensional is mean that the derivative on the period have to be larger than a certain constant, let's put it like this, one plus epsilon up to k. It's not a derivative have to be larger than one. Have to be exponentially larger than one. Okay, so fixed point is larger than one plus epsilon, period g, one plus epsilon, power two, and keep going. And this is a crucial point on the C1 topology. He's made this observation, actually it was related to the work of Frank, that people will call flexibility. What is a flexibility? And this is why the way that you prove this, and it's not difficult. Sorry, it's like a, on periodic point, if this is now a periodic point of period k, fk, this means that they can value here to be on the period of this order. So this means some number here, 1 plus epsilon k, and this is 1 minus epsilon k. Good. So what is the flexibility here? That is the opposite of the, all the notion that we're talking about rigidity or whatever. And we will see later that actually Manier, he made big incursions, incursions also on rigidity problems. But what is the flexibility? So, okay, so you have a function and you have the derivative. If I change the derivative, can I get a function nearby that realizes the chain of the derivative? You say, well, yeah, of course. No. So it's one dimensional. I take the derivative, I modify the derivative, and then I integrate. Yeah, you can do that. 
No? So a small perturbation of the derivative can be realized by C1 arbitrary, arbitrary small perturbation of the diffeomorphisms. With one point, it's easy. The problem is that the point has really large period. The orbit is really large, and you are in a compact manifold. So this means that the orbit starts to get closer to itself. There are iterates of the trajectory are getting closer to itself. And you have to do little changes on the derivative in a way that you want to keep the trajectory. And this is something that can be easily done in C1 topology, and it gets more, it's false in certain cases, and more complicated when you do higher topology. But this flexibility argument, the change here, realize it here, is something that's going to be essential in his proof. The third scene is, okay, he was getting there, getting there, and it's a surface case. Diffeomorphism, one dimensional are irrational rotation, Morse male. The only one that is structurally stable are the Morse male. This was already proved by Peugeotto. He did, he did it for flow, but you can do it. But surface dynamics start to become more complicated. Horseshoes start in the, uh, the horseshoe by male, where you have all this compli complication of dynamics happen is, is on the on the plane, those guys, we say, well, here the dynamics is complicated, but those are not diffeomorphisms. He proved the stability conjecture. And he say, well, corollary. He said, well, how is it corollary? And he proved in dimension two that axiom aims and the no cycling condition, doesn't matter, you can put transversality if you want, if and only if this. And remember that being here, it was related to being structurally stable. It's a corollary. So what is the, this is, look, this is the conjecture in dimension two. Why you put this a corollary? Well, because he proved this, an ergodic closing lemma. So you see the title, you say, well, this is totally unrelated to the stability conjecture. You say, well, he got the stability conjecture in dimension two, and it appeared in a paper that made no reference in the title to the stability conjecture. Or well, probably he was, looking, he was looking for the big prize, not for the small ones. But he got this one. That is pretty amazing that we will discuss, because it's extremely interesting in itself. And how does it work? Maybe I would like to give some details on the proof, yes, sometimes. So there was one result that was going on the duration stability conjecture from Pliss, back in the 60s. And he said, structural stability implies finiteness of repeller and sinks. So what is a sink? It's a periodic point. But it's an attracting periodic point. It's a periodic point. This is a periodic point, no? So, tac, 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 came back. Well, let's imagine it's a trajectory. And it's attracting means that any point in a neighborhood is going to be attracting to, its, to it. No? So you have a periodic point, and then there's a neighborhood that any point in this neighborhood is going to be attracted to this fixed point, or this periodic point. One dimensional is mean that something like that. Any point nearby is going to attract to this one. This is a sink. A repeller, well, those dynamics are invertible. A repeller is a sink for f minus 1. So if you start nearby, you start to move away from the trajectory, but you go backwardly, you are being attracted. So please prove that the structural stability implies finite of repellers and sinks. The proof is not difficult. If you watch the video by Manier, he will make reference of this result and how important and how inspiring was this result and what on everything that he gave some idea in which direction to go. And the proof is simple. Say the following. It's in quote. I gave value far from one implies large basin. What is this? So what is this the following? You have a periodic point. Fk of p equal p. And imagine that the eigenvalues, whether you have an eigenvalue of the derivative, it's in the spectrum, that the derivative is smaller than uh, 1 minus epsilon and epsilon is fixed. Power k, 
where k is the period of this guy. K. Good. So this implies that if you have p, there is a neighborhood, of, not necessarily on p, but in some iterate, that any point in this neighborhood go, going to converge to p, but the radius of this neighborhood is related to this epsilon and some quantities that go will depend on f. So the size of the basin of attraction basically depends on this k. So you then, because we are in a compact manifold, you cannot, there is no enough room to have infinitely many of those guys. Because you have, you have, you have, if you have infinitely many with this property on the eigenvalue, you have to put in infinitely many balls of the same radius and they're going to intersect. And they cannot intersect because one to have to go one point and have to, the other have to go to the other because they are the basin of attraction. The well, basin of attraction have to be disjoint in different periodic points. So it's a problem of room. So okay, if there's, there's not enough room, this means that if I have infinitely many, then the eigenvalue have, have to go to one. But if the eigenvalue are going to one, so you don't have this uniform exponential separation from one, using this flexibility argument, he can produce a bifurcation of a periodic point. So eigenvalue have to one, and then the dynamic is not in Fm. This means that the period by perturbation, a small perturbation, you have a non-hyperbolic periodic point. So this is basically the idea. So now you have finite number of xenon repeller. This was the first step, by right, please. The second step, it was an old result by Pugh, that this idea that, well, you are looking to build everything through periodic points. Well, remember, action aim. The no wonder is the closure of periodic points. So you need to have a lot of periodic points. But there was already a result by Pugh that shows that you are dealing in the C1 topology. Generically, the periodic points are dense. And if you are dealing with this, it's not only that generically the periodic points are dense, always are dense in the no wonder inside in this category. Because otherwise you are be destroying or creating periodic points. And because you only have Finite number of things and repeller, the, the subtle periodic points are dense in the non wandering. So now what happened that this is your non wandering set? So this is your non wandering set. Well, let's say here is the non wandering set. Here in the non wandering set, you have periodic points. But now they are saddles, because you remove it, the finite number of things and repel. So if they are saddles, you have an uh, eigenvalue smaller than one and eigenvalue larger than one. Well, this is the definition of the saddle. So they say, now you have saddle, and what is a saddle? Well, some eigenvalues are larger than one and some eigenvalues smaller than one. They are saddle. Let me mention. So you take one point, take the orbit, and you put the stable and unstable. Like in a space. You take another one, do the same. Take another one, do the same. And keep going. Take all the periodic point and take the hyperbolic split on the periodic point. So you have a, func a, a function defining it on a dense set. Well, problem. Given a function that is defined on the dense set, can you extend it to the closure? So, well, basically it's this. It's a problem of extending some bundles. And what he proved long time ago when he was working on this notion of dominated splitting is if you have a dominated splitting, it's a property that can be extended to the closure. So it's, and he already formulated this lemma in the his fake per, per pair. And it's looking like naive. Well, why you care about uh, extending dominated splitting? I said, okay, if for some reason, I have the splitting on the periodic point, and the splitting on the periodic point is dominated, I can extend it to the closure. And now I have a good candidate to show that the splitting is hyperbolic. Because you need first, if you want to show hyperbolicity, some decomposition between two complementary directions. But you first, you need those complementary directions. And this is what he did. And he was going to show, or he showed it. 
Stand split in offside periodic point to the closure, and then okay, so now you have two directions. So well, try do something to show that one contract and the other span. Okay, so this the notion of minute splitting, and there are nine years in between those two papers, the one on seventy three and eighty two. The main lemma about extension it was already formulated on the paper on the seventy three, and this is eighty two. And how you do that, this idea of extending? Okay, so you have this, the split, hyperbolic splitting on S is for saddle, saddle periodic point, go to the closure. So this is the cartoon. So you have one point, P, 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 P. So this is the tool. Have the periodic orbit, Fn of P equal P. And this is the splitting on the periodic point. One color is red, I think. Well, this one that they are like thinner uh, is stable, and the black one is the unstable. How the split? They change, the angle could be ugly, etc. But they are matrices. So the, there is one linear map that brings this point into the derivative. They go from here to here, derivative from here to here. This is an attention band. And this flexibility argument says that if I pick up Okay, the flexibility argument is this. If you pick up matrices, VP, VFP, VF2P, this means what is VP? It's a matrix close to the derivative of F on P. VFP is a linear map close to the derivative of F on F of P, etc. You do this, you can pick up linear maps. What the flexibility argument, and it was introduced by Franks, show that you can find a map G, a diffeomorphism G, close to this one, that preserves the orbit, the orbit is the same, but the derivative is now the derivative of B. So you do whatever change on the derivatives, and then there is a diffeomorphism that relies this change of derivatives. So you are moving the problem. Sometimes uh, you see the work of Manier is about Given a problem, transform a problem in something else that is more malleable. And the way it was, well, this is in dynamics, everybody does this mathematics. And this new problem is a kind of linear algebra problem. Because, okay, so I change derivative and I can realize it. And which is the linear algebra problem is the following. And this goes back to dominated splitting. See, if you have, you are in the context of stability, you are in the context of a uh, Fm, <coughs> you have a periodic orbit with large period. Then if you take the product of the derivative, it has to be dominated. It has to be like this. You put in groups, you see this domination. Okay? You put. So the idea is like I have the derivative of this, I multiply by the derivative, the derivative which if you put all together is the derivative of Fk. Uh, the idea we are using the chain rule, nothing else. They have to be dominated. That if you put in group, they have this property that what happened here have to be what happened here have to be controlled by what happened here. And how can prove it? Say, okay, if it's not, what is the knot of domination. You would remember this. If the two eigenvalues are close to each other, mean that you are close to the identity of a multiple of the identity. But the identity is the worst because you put you, you do what you want with the identity. Change eigenvalue, put the identity in the one that you want, etc. Or you uh, there is this famous theorem that it says uh, eigenvalues uh, moves continuously. Well, eigenspace does not move continuously. If you want continuity of eigenspaces, you are aiming to domination. Okay, so it's many of the theory of cycle is the problem of continuity of eigenvalue and the continuity of subspaces. Okay, so what he does, he introduces more rotation, well, because if you are really close to the identity, you can in Produce a small rotation and you generate identity or something that is an omotitia. He introduced 
the small rotations, this is small, that you take the first one, rotate. Take the second one, rotate. Take the third one, rotate. This is an amortizia, as a linear map. But those perturbations as a linear map, by the flexibility argument, can be realized as perturbation of the diffeomorphism. So it's going to happen that there is a G nearby F that the derivative on the, in that periodic point that is preserved is going to be this. It's an homotisia. But you have an homotisia, well, uh, in dimension two, on any dimension other, you are creating a repeller or an attractor. No? Because it's the identity multiplied by one plus alpha or one plus epsilon or one minus epsilon. So when you produce remotisia, you create a new signal repeller. But you already have a finite number of them. And so this is a problem. OK, so this is dominated. Great. Now you have the domination. Wonderful. But I want hyperbolicity. So you are, who cares about domination? Well, now, nowadays we care a lot. But at this moment, who cares about domination? He said, OK, we have to show that the direction E is contract. Well, E is contracted and F is expanding. And so how to prove it? And this is where the title of the paper uh, appears, comes in, the Godic closing lemma. What is the closing lemma? Closing lemma means that if you have a recurrent trajectory, you want to close the trajectory. And now it became periodic. You have a point that is recurrent, like this. And then I would like to plop, close, and I have a periodic orbit. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes not possible. Actually, it could happen that what you close is this guy to this. Not this to this, but this to this. But still, you have a periodic orbit. But if you have this direction E, it's not contracted, means that you have a nearby system. Uh, here it should be G. So this is the trajectory of F. You can produce a periodic point, not only nearby, but they have this tracing property. So the new point P obtained by perturbation of F is a periodic trajectory that is following the trajectory of X up to Fk of X. We have this shallowing property. It's really shallowing. It's a periodic property that follows the other guy. But remember that, OK, but remember that I was assuming that E, well, whatever. He was assuming that E is not a contracted direction. Then you can find this recurrent trajectory that if you go from X, blah, 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 go to the derivative of Fk along the E direction, it's not contracted. So it's like, well, you don't see contraction, many trades, well, this happened that after the large iterate, I don't see the contraction. Okay, if there are more, but I don't see yet. And then you can find this point as recurrent. And what happened, because this dominated splitting has kind of robustness, so you have a matrix, uh, you have this uh, eigenspace a nearby system, a near, a eigenspace nearby, so for P, there is a one direction along the orbit that is close to the direction, the, the E direction of the orbit of X, and they're close. So if along X you didn't see any contraction, along P you are not seeing the contraction neither. Just a continuity. OK, but if you don't see that, what happened? A new source is created. Why? Because if this is not contracting, it could be that it's, uh, it's uh, well, okay, so if it's not contracting, F is expanding. So this means that if this number, the equation is more than one, but this is <coughs> close to one, this has to be larger than one. Good, so this is larger than one. But this is not contracting, this means that if this is close to one, then I can do this flexibility argument and then make, uh, make it larger than one if it wasn't re already larger than one. But now you have a repeller. And you cannot do that. So this ergodic closing lemma is, is the proof uh, 
it's extremely difficult. No, no, no. The idea is pretty. Uh, is 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 the idea that almost every point, uh, for almost every point, there is an iterate that is going to show a nice property. Basically, this this is what happened in ergodicity. So I go in to get some property, and almost every point is an iterate having this nice property. And the nice property is the one that allows to close trajectory in a, in a nice way. So ergodicity is, is like, a, eventually, I, I visit in certain place that is good. Okay, and the good is a place that allows me to produce this closing with the shadowing. And, and this, but it's pretty smart to identify which is the good and why eventually you are visiting the good. Okay, it's deep, it's conceptually deep. When you start to read the paper of Manier, he's very, sometimes he's like calculation, 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 but it's, there are so many deep ideas on realizing those calculations. And if you watch the video, if you read the paper, you say, no, okay, move it away. And then you, but well now with this, you have the paper on the computer, you turn off the paper, and then you turn on the video, and you say, ah, wow, his video, no? <laughs> but okay, so this is dimension two. What happened in higher dimension? He already identified what was the key to solve the problem in any dimension. And he says explicitly. Now what he wants is this. I put all together the periodic, of, the periodic point of index one. Index one means one eigen value smaller than one. Put all together the periodic point of uh, index two, index three, etc. No? Well, those guys have to be separated. In dimension two, you have uh, uh, things, saddle, and repeller. But sin and repellers are finite, so it's clear they are separated from the saddles. And so you want to show this, that the periodic point in this I and J, they are separated. So the periodic point are different in of are far from each other. This is a new challenge. Now let me, maybe we can finish with the challenge. And he solved it. But it's funny because he solved it four years later on this paper that we put on the beginning, but he changed uh, years. So he's aiming on this, while well, these tools are not working, he generates a bunch of new tools. And one is relating about creating dynamical links. He say, okay, so what is this? He says, he, this is his finger. And this is his drawing. So you put periodic point of the same index. If you don't have what you want to separate those guys, you put, the, there is a bunch of point of index i, a bunch of point of index i, a bunch of points that they are far from another, and there is a kind of link or a recurrency that they are missing to this, 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 and this. And then he moved the finger and then he connect those. I said, well, when you produce this, this connecting, and the next picture will go going to look better, you are creating new periodic points where it shouldn't have existed. And this goes back to a problem of Poincaré. Poincaré, in his work, he was saying, OK, on the problem of stability of the solar system, he was identifying that in the three-body three body, uh, three body problem, that there were trajectories that were kind of recurrent, and they were associated to a periodic trajectory. So if you imagine they have a fixed point. They are points that they are, looks like they are coming. Uh, they are getting closer to this point. They go away, they came back, they go away, they came back. And this is the problem of this. You have this fixed point, and remember everything hyperbolic. You want one direction that everything gets closer, and one direction that everything goes far away on the unstable direction. And they're coming back. And the pictures, you can see, try to imagine, though they are unstable, it's accumulated on the stable, doing this. They accumulate and getting closer and closer. And the problem is okay. So there is something, no, it's like this. Come in here, go there, go here, here. And he said, okay, will be nice if we close it. Well, and he produced another paper that is called the C1 uh, connecting lemma that he showed that in certain cases you can, you can connect. 
And so he produced, and this is the one that is producing this dynamical links there. And you have to understand this in the creation of dynamical links. And it's interesting because the, the connecting lemma, uh, he wasn't proved by him, it was proved later by Hayashi, he proved in a particular case. But the smart idea of him was, either I can produce this connection by perturbation, or there is a connection there that shouldn't have existed. Under this notion of dominated splitting, either you have certain conditions that allow you to create, and this is a C2 creation, or there was something that was going on there that the connection already existed, and there shouldn't be a connection there. Because, they, because if you have this connection, there are periodic points, and there shouldn't be any periodic point there. So this is the... And the second one is a generalized and also closing lemma. Doesn't matter, he will explain it. They basically say that you have this, uh, this splitting, and you know that this is stable and the other is not that stable, then F, and he's not perturbing, then this guy has to be expanding. There are similar ideas by Liao, uh, and the story of Liao is interesting in itself, and I wanted to explain it, and I said, oh, okay, so I have so much trouble explaining this, and then I looked to the video and Mani did it better. And so let's show the video just to me, to make a little bit of honor of Manier. You uh, have, uh, 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 if you know that the, the stable is contracted, and in the unstable, you know that you have a lot of periodic points where you have good expansion. But you must have also some point where you don't have expansion in the orbit of that point. Oh, if these intersect. No, no, no. I mean, this is step. If oh, this step. contracts, so if it contracts half, then it expands pure. the other. Oh, yeah. And the, the idea is, is, it's only this. So if it doesn't expand, then there's something. If it doesn't expand, you have expansions along the periodic orbit. Yeah. But you must have one point where you don't have an expansion. One point in the closure. One point in the closure where well, you don't have an expansion. Some unstable vector, which isn't. Is is more or less bound in the future. And then the idea is to dissolve the expansion that you have at the periodic orbit, moving near the point, this 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 expansion must dissolve. No? Because yeah, in the in the, yeah, in the yeah, okay? and then you, you start moving it and dissolving the expansion till you uh, but you don't de you don't let the expansion dissolve completely because then you are you can't go anywhere, no? You Give just, up a little you bit. just get just a little bit of expansion. Yeah. No? And then you find, using the old idea of the of closing lemma, you find a periodic orbit whose expansion ex is an expansion, but it's very little. Lost a little bit. And that, that's, that's uh, impossible because one property was here that said that for structurally stable things, the expansions are definitely good. Uniformly, definitely good. Larger than 1 over lambda. OK. Uh, I don't know if somebody understood, but it's in the. Uh, it's good. Okay. And so he proved the stability conjecture. <laughs> this is the third video. Okay. She so said, okay, oh, wow. So Manier is look, and this is really, uh, I am making the disservice to the memory of Manier, because what I explained is look like he was obsessed with one issue. Uh, it's not true. Because really, on the process of generating all those tools, he was producing so much result that it was moving in different directions. And he said, okay, but he was a master of C1 topology, and this is so flexible. Ah, come on, if I give you something C2, C3, ah, now I want to see you. So okay, give me something rigid. Give me the most rigid stuff. He said, okay, uh, I give you infinitely. No, no, give me more. Analytic, no, give me more. Well, give me a polynomial. Okay, with a polynomial I can do it. And so actually, he did that something amazing. That is, in certain ways, it's related with the way that he was approaching stability conjecture, that is for holomorphic dynamics. So when he was moving beyond C1, no, he was under one voice was to understand this set, the set of dynamics such that all the periodic points are hyperbolic even by perturbations. They should have some structure. And the second is identifying the sole obstruction to hyperbolicity. So if something is not hyperbolic, why? 
And he did a lot of contribution on this. I will focus on in this one. He, he had in mind, and he proved in the C1 topology, that Fm should imply hyperbolicity. So the fact that the periodic point are hyperbolic should imply hyperbolicity. But he said, okay, but also should imply stability. So of course, if stability and hyperbolic is the same, they prove hyperbolicity and then stability. No? But the question is how to prove stability without proving hyperbolicity. So if you have the periodic point are hyperbolics, there remain hyperbolic perturbations, and then this one should give stability. Because we say that stability, if you have something stable, you have this conjugate periodic point goes to periodic point. But if they are hyperbolic, and you have one dynamic, the periodic point is hyperbolic, nearby is hyperbolic, I send the fix to the fix, the one of period two to the period two, the period three on the three, and maybe this is 10 to the closure. And he proved this result with uh, Sullivan. The guy that is making question on the video is Sullivan. It's this result by Magnets at Sullivan on dynamic of rational maps. And he proved the following, which is basically stability without proving hyperbolicity. It's pretty interesting. It has a deep consequence. The, the, many people have heard about the, the problem of the Mandelbrot set. Mandelbrot set. Mandelbrot set is locally connected. So the Mandelbrot set locally connected is equivalent, well, for the quadratic family, you have the Mandelbrot set. It's equivalent of proving, proving that action A is open and dense. It's, a, it's already, it's a still open. It's a problem that uh, has been alive for a while. Uh, there are not many progress after the main in row by Chocos. But he proved that with uh, Paulo Sad and Denis Sullivan, that stable ones are open and dense. Which is funny because all the results that were new on stability were going through on the idea of hyperbolicity. And he proved the open and dense of the stable ones without going through the stability. And the idea was this one, as we say, extending a little continuation of periodic point. For each periodic point of P of a system F0, there is an analytic continuation. As I have my system uh, F, and then I do a deformation by a parameter, you want F lambda. So you have the, for P0, you have P lambda. You have this picture. So this is the complex. You have this complex manifold. It is, this is, sorry, this is a, the complex plane. You have a parameter. You have periodic point. P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. All of them are hyperbolic. So this means that P1 has a continuation. P2 has a continuation. P3 has a continuation. All of them have a continuation. So I bring this to this guy. This, this, this. And this is, again, a continuation of kind of conjugacy in a dense set. And the magic in the complex plane is that you can extend this conjugacy on periodic point to the closure. And the proof is simple. It's not difficult. You use a little bit of knowing a little bit of uh, understanding a little bit of complex dynamic or complex analysis. This proof you can adapt here to prove that the, those guys, that they have derivative the larger than one, they are stable. So you talk about that multiplying them by two <coughs> uh, is, is a structure stable. Well, try to prove that a structure stable using this idea. It works well on the circle. OK. Um, and if you wanted to prove the other side of the conjecture, use either the ergodic closing lemma or one of these uh, explanations of Manier on the video, that you have a map here on the circle with the property that periodic point are dense. And if the structure is stable, then the derivative have to be larger than one for an iterate. All the ingredients are in this little piece of the video or in the ergodic closing lemma. So, it's an exercise. Well, they told me that it would be good. Okay. The, the, the amazing part is like uh, there was, what well, everybody knew, he died in 95. All the tools that he brought into the community, uh, 
probably gave the job to many of the guys that were in the audience. No? So he left so many things on the table, under the table, be, be below the bed, on the whatever, everywhere. And you can mention all the stuff that they were built after that on his technology. Looking beyond uniform hyperbolicity, say, well, hyperbolicity, partially hyperbolicity, dominated splitting. Dynamics is you don't want conjugacy about what's called something transit, but you perturb remain transitive. Understand the dynamical dichotomy. This lambda lemma, the funny is this, we know the lambda lemma but partly, but it is a, it's also con lambda lemma. It has been a strong, powerful tool in complex dynamics, and many of the roles that people are doing in, in complex dynamic dimension two are built on this structure. So really it's like a, a and I'm not talking about Lagrangian, nothing, it's like a, already this, uh, it's like a, he, he left the playground and with the many toys on the, on the room and we are still playing with the tools and we are having fun and we find shops. So <laughs> in certain ways it's generous. And okay, and this is Manier and, and you see it like it's still the identity car from Uruguay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, many of those guys that they are in the audience, probably they were around him when he proved stability conjecture, etc. Maybe somebody can say something interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much for the nice lecture. Indeed, uh, I want to ask uh, what is uh, the role of uh, Lefschitz in this history? I see that you say that uh, firstly it was roughness, and I know because it is from the block in my city. But after that, you said that Livorio is translated as structure table. And that's all no, that there is another story. There is another letter in between. Uh -huh. uh, I know that it's as a notion, but it's very strange that Livorio is. What role of Livorio? Or is it just the same? Well, I, I tell you, okay, so. Uh, if we ask me about the role of Lefschet in uh, mathematics, maybe we have to. Uh, make a conference for many days. So we know all the contribution. In dynamic, he did a lot of contribution, but in this particular case, this uh, relationship is very particular. He translates, so Peixoto was back in Brazil, and we were talking about the 50s, and he was reading the book by Lefschetz, where it was discussing the result by Andronov and Pontryagin, and there is an adaptation, uh, it was another proof by a French guy, and he was saying that he was talking on the fear, not just in the local dynamic. And he had a seminar. This is what Peixoto told me. Um, and I am sharing the story. And, and he said that he found certain problems on the proof. And Lefchev, uh, Elon Lanchez Lima, who was in Brazil, was very close to Lefchev, working in topology. And he asked uh, to Elon, uh, to bring to left another letter, well, the previous letter. So at this time, we mail the letter by hand, and so Elon bring the letter to left in Mexico. They met in Mexico. He opened the letter in Mexico. Blah, blah, blah. He said, "Okay, send it here." And so Peixoto was there. And apparently, Peixoto arrived, and he said he knew the definition of structural stability, stability. And so Peixoto said, "Well, I only have a definition." He said, "It's like a." We have the few morphisms on surface. It's a Banach space. And if it's a Banach space, I can be talking about two guys nearby. And I can say they are structurally stable. If the two guys nearby, there is a conjugacy between this. I don't have any more. Unless you say, well, now you can prove so many theorems. So this is, the left chair was very, like, a very present, even in the modern definition of what's structural stability. And he was kind of a student. Of Lefschetz. So basically, it's like, and it was an interesting case where the definition is so powerful, no? Because he brings a definition, this is Peixoto, um, and just this definition that they put on the slide, like, was like this, uh, and people that are studying dynamic were like, a, or the, who focus on those problems 
with a lunch and dinner, etc. And he's so naive, he said, well, but at this moment it wasn't. And it showed how sometimes getting the right definition is the one that starts to open the, the area. You know? And so Lefce was present at this time that the foundation of the notion of stability were given. And this is just on this corner of the history of dynamics. So you ask me other places, well, it's going to be more complicated. Any, any other questions? So thank you, Anthony.